Hello, I'm Bob Wilhelm. I'm a storyteller. And today's story is a story that is also a Russian story, like last week's story. Last week was a Leo Tolstoy story, and this week is a Fyodor Dostoevsky story. However, it doesn't seem to be a Russian story because I recast it in a different setting. I've recast it in the setting of the story of St. Mary of Egypt, uh, and not only the events of 1,500 years ago, but the events of Egypt today. I won't go through that now. I do that in the commentary in the story, both in the textual and in the uh, audio format. But uh, it's, you should be viewing this some day in the future beyond 2011. This is a time of crisis in Egypt. Uh, the government seems to be on the verge of falling. There are great demonstrations early in late in January, early in February of 2011. And the whole balance of the Middle East seems to be threatened. Uh, and whether there will be peace or not or what will happen, we don't know. And so I was taking in the images from uh, news coverage on video. And I was also working with the Dostoevsky story, trying to find out if I had a way that I could use it for this particular Sunday. The two events were separate in my own mind, but they were brought together in a very amazing way. And the result was that the story that I felt could not be told, because Dostoevsky is not the kind of storyteller that Tolstoy is, the story that I felt could not be told finally was told. And, uh, but it was reset in modern day Egypt. Um, a little bit about these two writers and why I'm so attracted to them and why I feel that they are important in our understanding of the scripture and our living of the scripture and our sharing of the scripture and story. There are many good storytellers, literary people, uh, story writers, novelists, short story writers, playwrights, movie uh, producers, etc., etc. But very few of them combine their great artistic ability with a clear spiritual vision. And that spiritual vision is found both in these two men from the 19th century. Um, Tolstoy is the better storyteller. He has the ability to uh, paint a big picture of many, many characters and to create the setting, the time, the culture they live in and to see the issues that unfold in their own life, how they all affect each other, and, and um, his War and Peace is, is one of the great novels of the world. And of course, in his late life, he became a mystic, a, um, a person who was an outspoken critic of the Russian regime and a moral leader in the Western world, uh, great fame. In his, in his later life. Now Dostoevsky was very different. He was a troubled man. He was an epileptic. Uh, he had been thrown into prison for his revolutionary work in his youth. They had spent time in Siberia. Uh, and he, uh, he struggled. He struggled with his, his belief and with the realities, not only the social realities of a very repressive government, but the deep spiritual crisis that exists in human life. Um, he went into those dark places. And so his great novel is perhaps the, the Brothers Karamazov, which is my favorite writing of his, but also his uh, story of crime and punishment. And in, it is that story, an episode in that story, that is the basis for my storytelling of Mary of Egypt. And um, I recommend that you go to the, to the novel and, and read that. Uh, references are in, in my written text and, and the uh, commentary that I make with the uh, sound file. What is important is that Dostoevsky has this ability to find gospel images and to explore them in a way that not only simply repeats the images kind of on an outward level, sort of like an allegory or uh, uh, a piece of uh, 
very simple, direct um, teaching literature. So when we go to a, a story by Dostoevsky, we don't immediately think, oh, that is like the gospel story or Jesus' parable of or whatever. We do that with Tolstoy, and that's why he's much more accessible as a, as a teacher, as a catechist, so to speak, as, uh, as a preacher, a homilist uh, to our modern souls. But Dostoevsky will explore things in a very um, different way. And he leads us to kind of reconstruct what is happening in our own souls as well as what is happening in the story and the way the story reflects the scripture. It's a great challenge to listen to his stories. In the story that is the basis of the story of Mary of Egypt that I tell, uh, there is a conflict, a, a struggle that in a way parallels the story of Jesus and the woman at the well. The dialogue between them is quite incredible, except Jesus is the source of life for this woman. And Raskolnikov, who was a murderer, is um, almost, a, almost a demonic challenging to the equivalent of the woman of the well, the woman Sonia in the story. Well, I'll put that aside. Um, the story in Dostoevsky centers on her reading of the raising of Lazarus and therefore making a statement of faith uh, that she doesn't want to make but is forced to. She's forced to witness. She is a witness. It's a very moving, moving story. In the story of Mary of Egypt that I tell, the woman whose name is Mary, who is the physician from uh, uh, in modern day Egypt who has gone to the upper to upper Egypt because of a crime that has been committed that involves her brother Anthony um, that story does didn't fit with the raising of Lazarus but it did fit with the gospel teaching of Matthew from the Sermon on the Mount for this Sunday. And so as a storyteller, I simply removed not only the Russian setting, but the central story and replaced it with a story that is part of our lectionary, part of our liturgy for this Lenten season. And I say Lenten season not because it has began, we're still in ordinary time, but we are building up to the Lenten season. And in the Eastern Church, the Sundays before Lent are clear preparation for Lent itself. And I feel that these Sundays uh, are also a preparation for the season of preparation, a kind of a Lenten journey that begins before Lent and the Lenten journey itself. So I thank you uh, for listening to my commentary. I hope that the story of um, Mary of Egypt is a story that will speak to your own heart. and will recast the very powerful, very powerful and uh, direct teaching of Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount, uh, a message not only for yesterday, but a message to us today. I'm Bob Wilhelm. I'm a storyteller. Thank you for sharing time with me.